bringing you the latest news from Bucks County. This is the Courier Times Update with Rachel Cannell. This Courier Times Update is brought to you by St. Mary Medical Center in Langhorne, PA. It's your health. Expect more. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rachel Canelli reporting from the Courier Times newsroom with your news update for Friday, May 10th. Accused killer Kenneth Patterson has led police to the body of his ex-girlfriend, Falls nurse Diane Corrado. Her remains have been found along Newton Creek in Camden. Patterson provided police with the information just days after he unexpectedly dropped a number of pretrial motions related to his July trial. Prosecutors have not said if they've struck a deal with Patterson. If convicted in Corrado's homicide and kidnapping, Patterson could face the death penalty. Reporters Joe Chevalier and Lori Mason Schrader have more info on this story at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. Three Bristol Township men accused of breaking into a drugstore to steal cigarettes during Superstorm Sandy are learning the hard way that you can't fool with Mother Nature. Kyle Robinson, David Nolan, and Michael McKernan face second-degree felony theft charges because the crime took place during a natural disaster. The trio has been charged with burglary, criminal trespassing, and theft. They are accused of breaking into a Walgreens on New Falls Road in October. Reporter Joe Chevalier has all the details on this story on our website. We're learning more today in the investigation of the murder of Violetta Isakoff and the subsequent police shootout that ended in the death of her ex-husband, Kenneth Phillip, in April. Phillip shot his ex-wife with a shotgun as she sat in her car with her 16-year-old daughter, who was also injured. He then opened fire on police and was found dead inside his car following the shootout. The lingering question is whether Phillip was shot by police or took his own life. During the course of that firing, uh, Officer Friel uh, succeeded in fatally uh, wounding uh, Mr. Phillip. It is plain under these circumstances that Officer Friel's actions were entirely justified. Uh, it, it, so it goes without saying that certainly he will not be the subject of any prosecution. Uh, in fact, I would suggest that the officer is to be commended. The shotgun was uh, something that was in the family so that uh, uh, it, it was not, uh, there, there was not any kind of breakdown in the uh, uh, insta-check system. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Phillips certainly was the subject of a protection from abuse order which had been in, uh, in standing for some time. Reporter Joe Shavaya and photographer Stephanie Vito will have the latest on this story online. For your Bucks County forecast, after all that rain, at least we're ending this week on a good note and a warm one. It's sunny today with a high near 81. The rain may return tonight, though. There's a chance of showers and thunderstorms with a low around 62. The storms could stick around Saturday, and it will be warm again with a high near 75. But the sunshine is back Sunday for Mother's Day with a high near 69. When we come back, our video sports reporter Jen Wilgus will drop by to give you the district softball picture. Check it out when we come right back. Our very own Jen Wilgus is joining us to give us some insight into next week's District 1 softball seeding meeting. Always good to have you, Jen. So let's talk playoffs. Okay, thanks, Rachel. Well, this is my favorite time of year, personally and professionally, because not only is summer coming, but it's softball playoff time. So that means I get to sit out in the sun, hopefully, <laughs> and do my job and hopefully get uh, color somewhere besides my face. <laughs> but um, it's been really annoying this week, I'm sure, for the teams with all the rain and the reschedulings and postponements. But they're about to be rewarded for all their patience and hard work because the district seating meeting is next Thursday, May 16th. Um, and we have a lot of area softball teams who not only will make the tournament, but will get high seeds and home games. Um, so in the largest classification, Pensbury and the Chamonix are shoe-ins, not a shocker. But it's kind of cool, the underdog story this year has been Salem, who's not traditionally one of our stronger programs, and had to play the whole season on the road because of field issues. Looks like they're going to make it in, so that's cool. Um, William Tennant might also sneak in, which would give the Suburban One League National Conference, which has eight teams in it, four teams in districts, so wow. that's not too shabby. Then with our smaller schools, Bristol is looking like they're going to be the top seed in Class A um, for District One, um, and Morrisville might also get into that tournament. Um, Conwell Egan, who plays in the Philadelphia Catholic League, which then bleeds into District 12, um, had a great season, as always, and will probably be the top seed in the Catholic League playoffs. 
um, then Villa Joseph Marie might uh, sneak in in Class AAA. So that gives um, local softball fans plenty to watch and cheer about um, past Memorial Day into the month of June when the state playoffs start. Yeah, it sounds like lots of exciting things to look forward to in this postseason right here in Bucks County. But I also understand there's an event early next week and that has something to do with your shirt that you're wearing. <laughs> right. Uh, Tuesday is softball night in Bristol. Um, it's a great annual tradition. It brings four teams and their fans together for a doubleheader and a great cause. And usually it raises money for breast cancer. But this year, they're sort of supporting one of their own. Um, Bri uh, Bristol's Jean Shapcott, she played softball at the high school there, um, has been diagnosed with a rare form of liver cancer. And green is the color for liver cancer, the way that pink is for breast cancer. Um, so all proceeds from the doubleheader, which is the first game, Bristol versus Truman, and the second game, Pensbury versus Neshaminy, which we all know is a big game anyway, um, will go to the Green for Jean campaign, which was set up for Jean, and it's something that the entire Bristol community, from restaurants to schools to CrossFit gyms, has really rallied around for the past several months. So if you want to see some great softball and support Jean, um, come on out to the Bristol's home field on Tuesday. Um, it starts at 5.30. Wow, it sounds like a really good event and what a great cause. Thanks again, Jen. In high school sports, the Council Rock South girls lacrosse team made a strong team effort to guarantee at least a share of second place in the SOL National Conference, defeating rival Council Rock North 12-8 to yesterday at Walt Snyder Stadium. This was kind of like the deciding factor for us. Every game counted towards the end, and, this game, and since we lost to Pensbury, we knew if we didn't win this, we'd be over, so this was absolutely huge for us. This game was huge for us. For the past three years, we've always lost to North on our senior both times, and like to win, beat them both times this year was incredible and it just shows all the hard work that we paid off these past four years. We always had like the potential but it was just we need to just just do it basically. Like we always like talked about what we needed to do but this year like we actually did everything we needed to do and it all just paid off. With this win I think we have a pretty good chance because we're probably we're probably gonna end up second in the league with winning the if we win the Chamonix tomorrow contending on that and then you know, we're just gonna go strong in the playoffs. It's the first time in a really long time that we've been so it's a really great win for us. A win today over Neshaminy would give the Golden Hawks sole possession of second place heading into the District 1 tournament where they haven't been since 2009. You can follow Jen Wilgus' coverage at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com. Now here's a look at what we're working on in the newsroom. Former Governor Ed Rendell is expected to address gun control advocates in Morrisville Saturday while pro-gun demonstrators make their case at the park where Little League games were moved to avoid the controversy. Reporter George Matar and photographer Kim Weimer will be there. Also tomorrow, a fundraiser will be held at Our Lady of Grace School in Pendell for Neshaminy High School student Matt Cruz, who was paralyzed after a February bus crash in Boston. Tickets are $10, and the proceeds benefit Matt's extensive medical care. Photographer Carl Casola will be covering. And finally, we're getting an inside look at Delaware Valley College's new multi-million dollar life sciences building. Reporter Frida Savannah will be taking a tour to give you a sneak peek. You can find all of these stories at BucksCountyCourierTimes.com or follow me on Twitter for updates on your latest local news. I'm Rachel Canelli. Thanks for watching. Have a good Friday and a nice weekend, and happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there.